Let's explore what is an abstraction and why it is useful in coding. An abstraction, simply put, is a sequence of events which you group together and give a name to. Let's say your morning consists of waking up at 8 a.m., drinking coffee and eating breakfast, 30 minutes of yoga and exercise, and 10 minutes of meditation. And then you call this sequence of events my morning routine and you group them together. So if you were to talk with somebody who actually knows you and understands your morning routine, you don't have to explain to them each time I wake up at 8 a.m., eat coffee and uh, do breakfast, 30 minute yoga, you can just say, I, it was my morning routine. I was at my morning routine. I finished it or something like that. And they will understand the sequence of events. So you're actually compressing the sequence of events into a single abstraction. Where this becomes uh, helpful in coding is that if you are, for example, writing an uh, agent system or dealing with a system which uses API calls, you'll have to write the code for the GPT API call. And then you'll quickly realize, well, you'll have to add messages to it, like a system message, user message, how you're going to do that. And then you'll also realize you'll have to manage its history. Now, each time you start a project, you might uh, start from scratch, writing these by hand manually, or you can abstract it away in a, a Python class, for example. Uh, and then you can just keep using that and in this uh, you will have abstracted a sequence of events or uh, each each event as a modular element and then you can actually reuse this anytime you need them. So let's take a look at a concrete example. Let's say we want to make a GPT call. Uh, where do we begin? One way to begin would be to go to OpenAI documentation, go to text generation, go to chat completions, get an example from there or an example code that you had used earlier and you know paste it in and then see what it does and then now you'll have to manage a system message maybe you'll have to delete these and write a system message of your own and then you'll then realize oh okay well how do i add further messages into it and then you'll you might think or something like well i'll just create a while loop uh while true i'll just take a user input while true but then how do i pass it to this and then you realize oh this has to be a function and then you'll now have to define this into a function and then get rid of this, something like that, and then call this function here. And then after that, you'll realize, okay, well, this, how do I, I'll have to add these uh, responses, whatever response I get back to the uh, messages. How do I do that? Well, I can't do it like that. You may have to actually move the messages list outside of it into a messages list like this, and then pass the messages on by making a parameter here, and then messages and our messages will equal messages so that you can actually say something like here messages that append role assistant content response so but then you'll have to repeat this in every step of the way and you, you'll you'll have to manage every step of the way in a manual fashion instead you can actually write abstract you can abstract some of these processes make them reusable and we'll take a look at that next so this is where abstracting away generally used items, reusable items, a sequence of events into a class like setting, for example, makes sense. Now, before we talk more about its benefits, uh, let's see why abstractions are sometimes so difficult and why they can also be problematic. Because, because you are taking a lot of little detail and then you're grouping it in a single definition, let's say in this case, this, this introduces a level of separation from the sequence of events. If you were to talk to somebody who doesn't know you at all about your morning routine, they'll have no idea what time you wake up, what you do after that, how many minutes of yoga, or if you do it at all. So uh, abstraction doesn't help if you don't understand the underlying mechanisms. And then on top of it, if your day consisted of routines and then you abstracted it onto another level even, now you have two le layer levels of abstraction, like your morning, your lunch, your dinner routine and those those <laughs> so it might start looking like this like you know morning routine your lunch routine your dinner routine and then you say my daily routine here and then you combine these so you have so as you can see this can get very complex well very simple quickly but it hides a lot of complexity if you didn't know might start uh, causing confusion which you may have experienced with some frameworks but my idea with the unified open ai uh, and the gpt calls class within it was to actually make it as useful as possible but also keep the abstraction level to a single layer because uh, each one of these calls here like each one of these methods and calls are actually what you would use anyway like get response is exactly like a simple uh, api call but it also handles whether if this should print it handles if you want to use json mode if you are going to use streaming you know it handles gpt vision response in the same manner uh, to generate images to perform uh, text to speech to get embeddings and to perform similarity search perform an excess search previously known as metaphor or a perplexity search and i also have included the async versions of these if you want to call them in parallel 
So it just simplifies your life when you actually import this class and instantiate a GPT and just say GPT is just uh, that chat. Hello, how are you? You will maybe run this. We'll see that the class is initialized, initialized and we immediately, immediately get a response. If you wanted to convert this into a chat loop, we can simply wrap it in a while loop and this will run just as well, but this will create a continuous chat loop and it manages uh, the message history. We can set a max history uh, length. You can set a mixed uh, mix uh, length for each message. For example, I can say hi. I can say hi, my name is Echo. And then I can ask what is my name. We'll see that it automatically have memory. Uh, your name is Echo. If I didn't want to keep track of message history, then I can just say this mix message history, mix history words attribute to zero. So if I were to run this with mix history words set to zero, and I just say hi first can say my name is Echo and then if I were to ask what is my name it's not going to remember that it always remembers the first message because it can also be a system message but system message is not automatically set but it will reset its memory based on the mix uh, history words so the main idea is that it's uh, helpful to build your own uh, abstractions uh, if you feel like you use them regular enough uh, so you can build totally something like OpenAI Unified but I spent quite a long time building this it took me over 10 hours to deal with every little detail and uh, this will be available at Patreon if you want to download it. I have actually created many projects that feature it lately. All my videos, ever since the OpenAI Unified API video, all uh, eight of them actually feature that. And actually, I feel it's very helpful. Like I said, uh, feel free to build your own uh, with, with these principles. But if you wanted the convenience of just having it, you can download it at Patreon. It'll be available at the uh, Connoisseur level. And also, if you wanted to, if you enjoy my videos and wanted to search or find other videos based on topic, or different topics, you can go to my website, echohive.live, and you can find their description, perform search. And if you're a patron, you can find the code download links for each one. I have over 200 projects at my Patreon, all of which, uh, the codes for which you can find at my website or at the Patreon. So this is, in essence, what uh, abstractions are, uh, as I understand it, and why they are useful in Python. So just think of it in terms of this. If you or if you end up finding some pieces of code which you keep reusing again and again, or like some sequence of uh, code events which you need to perform again and again, creating an abstraction, such as a function or a class, uh, that might really uh, benefit you. If you want to know more in detail about the OpenAI Unified API class, please watch this video right here, OpenAI Unified, on my YouTube or at my website. And I go into detail on how I built it and what methods it contains. So this is it for this video, but I'd like to talk about some of the apps that I built. If you visit my Echo AI Academy, there you can find all the videos. But while you're there, click on Auto Streamer, which, is, which auto creates content, which allows you to record it while it's being generated or you can live stream this content and what it's doing is building a course website in real time you can watch the live stream which in which i have displayed what it can do and this is the website we had created in real time and streamed it live and at the end actually create deployed the import it statement at railway.app and at the end of the live stream i actually explain how you can deploy the auto streamer generated websites to railway also, uh, another one of my app is CodeHive, which has over 900 free GPT-powered chat applications. You can simply browse through them or search for uh, whatever you need. And then uh, you can actually click on any one of them and you can see the code. This uses an abstraction as well. And I can copy that code and use it yourself if you like. And if you wanted to download all 900 of them, 900 plus, you can actually download it at my Patreon for $100. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video.